G'day fellas, and welcome to game number two of week number two. Sorry, week number three. <laughs> game number two of week number three in the Outback Octagon. Spawning in on the south side of the map. Playing in the color blue and the Chinese. We got Crackety here. That is correct. We have got ourselves a split map. This is one that looks a little bit like Mongolian Heights. And we have already got the bases beginning to build. Now, before we begin, I'm just going to fix up chat because I know a lot of people are just going to be uh, be wondering about that. So we're going to be using Crackety's chat here. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that I... Oh, let's... Hold on. Let me fix that one up. All right, let's try that. Make it a bit smaller as well. All right, there we go. We're doing this on the fly. So I do apologize to all those guys on YouTube. They're like, ah, this, this isn't very good production value. Well, I'm sorry. This is, <laughs> this is the best we can do. So who do we have spawning in and where are they spawning? So Crackety is going to be your player in the south. He's playing as the Chinese. Over towards his east, playing in the purple as the Abbasid Dynasty, we've got Simtom. Just above Crackety, playing as the Rus, we've got Recon. Towards Recon's west, playing as the Chinese in green, we have got to Muslim. And over towards his west, we have got 3DB playing as the Delhi Sultanate. On the north side of the river, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, we've got Averley to his east. Spawning in as the English in Teal, we've got Matiz. And finally, spawning in as the Delhi Sultanate, playing in the beautiful color pink, we've got Sort of. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is game number two of your third week coming in. So we're going to have to fix up that, that chat in the corner. Just give me a sec to, to fix that up. i got to make sure that it's all cropped nicely like that. Uh, hopefully that that is... Uh... Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's not too bad, is it? Maybe I can probably give it a little bit more on, on the top side as well so you guys can see the times. Or Yeah, we'll, we'll call that. Ho hopefully that's good enough for you guys. Maybe make it a little bit smaller as well. Damn, that's crazy. So I'm not going to be paying too much attention to the chat the same way that I did in, in the last game. Uh, so basically the way that that's working is we've just cut that from uh, Crackety's stream and we've just synced it up. So at, at the moment, this game is live, but it's got a five minute delay. He's got a five minute delay as well. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to Crackety's stream. If you want to go check him out, go do that. I encourage you to. Uh, he, he's a great player. He loves the Chinese as well. So he's going to be super happy here on the Chinese. Let's take a look at his spawn and see how he's gotten because he's already moving down towards his south position. We can see he's dropped down a mill here on the berries, pretty far away from the town center. So if he's going for an imperial official opening, it's going to be quite a walk back towards his town center. I want to go check in on the Muslim as well because he's going to be doing something similar. Now, keep in mind, both of these guys are playing the Chinese. So we do have two Chinese players here. And fortunately, it's not Litikor who's playing the Chinese today. <laughs> it is going to be Crackety and the Muslim. So... Litikor, obviously a pretty decent player, but definitely by no means, you know, top 10 the way that the Muslim is. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what we've got here today because these guys are going to be, uh, I suspect it's going to be, you know, the, the Chinese players looking to defend out of the pockets right now. I wouldn't be surprised if these guys even look to team up in the game uh, just because these guys are going to become early targets of everybody else. Because if you let China get too big, they can 3v1, they can even 4v1. It gets pretty crazy with their Grenadiers at the moment, how good they are. And that's exactly why they're being targeted by the devs for those nerfs that are coming in soon. Now, Recon up towards the north. He's got a nice little expansion going on up here. He can be, he can hide some landmarks up here if he so pleases. Uh, you can see he can actually get up through. I think he might be able to get through there. Uh, but uh, we'll check in on how he's doing. Imperial Official just doing a walk back with 20 gold. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one, Karakity. Over towards the east, we can see that House of Wisdom is going down for Symptom. Now, remember, we've got two Abbasid players this game as well. I know we've got a, a lot of Abbasid fans in the chat. Uh, so, Symptom here. He's going to be our first Abbasid, our second Abbasid player. It is Averly. So, these guys on opposite sides of the map. And you can see Averly yet to drop down his House of Wisdom. Now, remember, the Abbasid dynasty only have two landmarks. It's that main town center. It is that House of Wisdom. That's going to be the real key factor here. So basically, when these two landmarks go down, that is it for your Abbasid player. If someone scouts this, then they know for certain that, uh, that that is where those landmarks are. So there's going to be no hiding shenanigans here. But look, you can always look to try and hide away your landmark. But we do see some early fishing coming out from Averly. And take a look at this. Going for some villagers on the shore fish. 
So this is something that we're starting to see a bit more common. Obviously, the maps are promoting that. So we're going to be seeing Ancient Spires in Season 2, which promotes this. But also, we've seen Frisian... Uh, Frisian Marshes? Frish Frisian Marshes, uh, which is also promoting this uh, type of play as well. So for anybody wondering, the shoreline fish gather rate is actually faster than a boar. Uh, now, there are reasons why that is, and that is because when you're going from, say, this one right here, uh, and you're coming back here, it's quite a bit of walking distance. So it's got to it's got to mitigate that. But when you're getting really nice, close proximity, super good. All right, well, let's take a look and see how we're doing down on the south side. We've got, uh, we've got B over here who's being scouted out by Averly at the moment. These guys are quite far away. So you'd suspect that there's not going to be too many battles between these two guys. Age up already coming through for the Muslim. Now, remember, one of the reasons why China is so damn good when it comes to these free-for-alls is because they can build their town center, their starting town center, so much faster than the other Sips, which means that they get a good head start on getting to Feudal Age. Speaking of Feudal Age, it looks like Simtom now going to be going up with that economic wing. We'll check in over with Crackety as well because he's going to be thinking about going up to that next age shortly as well. We'll see where he is. There it is. It's going to be a Barbican that is coming down here on the food. So it makes a lot of sense. Now, remember, if we take a look at Crackety's position, he's going to know uh, that immediately to his north, he does have recon. Now, he's already scouted out over towards the west. He knows that this town center is here from the Muslim, but he doesn't know over to his east that Simtom is there. We'll check in on Simtom and see what that uh, line of sight is looking like for him. He's, uh, he's spotted this out, but not recently. So he doesn't actually know about this. And you can see he doesn't know about the mill. He doesn't know about that. So for Simtom right now, he's thinking he's got the whole world to himself. Now, I do... I think that was a villager that spawned there. So he's, he's basically found nobody at this point. He's, he's wondering if he joined the right game or not, or whether whether this is an eight-player free-for-all or a one-player free-for-all, because he's in a really good spot here. At least that's what he's thinking. He's got lots of sheep under his TC. Second town center going to be coming up here. He doesn't really think he's got too much of a threat. Now, obviously, he doesn't know about uh, about Crackety over here, but Crackety's probably got closer things to worry about. And we can already see that Recon is going for a little bit of a wild landmark placement. Look at this. Coming down with the Golden Gate in the middle of the map right here because he's so scared. He knows, if we take a look from Recon's perspective, he knows that to his south. Actually, I think he knows to his south. He's He's got Crackety. He might not know. He definitely doesn't know about Demuslim. Uh, what is going... Have these players just not scouted each other out? What is going on here? Looks like the, uh, the scout gonna be going down here, unfortunately, for recon. Very... Oh, it might make it out alive. It makes it out alive with eight health. Uh, he's got no idea <laughs> that two players have spawned really close to him. Now, he, he might suspect when he sees the scouts that, uh, that it's gonna be a problem. We'll take a look at the Muslim and see how he's doing. So, the Muslim, he's done a great job of scouting, and we can see... Mm, Yep, we can see already the beginnings of what some may call a bit of a cheesy play. Now, it looks like the Dome of the Faith is going to be coming up on the south side here uh, for for uh, for Cra or for uh, B. But now B going to be moving out villagers. I can't help but feel this this villager pool might be a little bit in vain. Uh, ideally, I would have loved to have seen the Barbican go down right here and, and hit that Dome of the Faith, but uh, you probably just would have cancelled it. Uh, but villagers now... Gonna be coming out, looking to cause a bit of damage here. We'll double click on the Muslims' villagers just so we can track the health a little bit better. One villager gonna be going down, two villagers gonna be going down potentially. All jump inside, and with that, the Barbican has been secured, and now the Muslim looks to secure out this position over on the western flank. The Muslim looking very strong already. A Barbican in your face. B and Demu already fighting. Says Matiz. Matiz has already scouted this out. If we take a look at Matiz, you can see that uh, that he's he spotted that one. Uh, he, he knows exactly what was happening over there. Uh, so Matthias is going to be super happy about that. We also see that he's gone for the Council Hall. Now, speaking of Council Halls, we've got that landmark that's finally gone up for our Abbasid player in the north. That is going to be uh, Averly. Uh, so he's just putting the House of Wisdom down. Bit of a, an awkward spot, if I'm honest with you guys. Ideally, I would have even like loved this a bit more up here. Uh, and just because the problem is, if it gets to the late game, you could see trebuchets look to line the shore here and actually take out this House of Wisdom from over on the other side, and it becomes really difficult to answer to that. Got to be careful on this south side. Recon is uh, looking to take out that position, but now another outpost going to be coming up, and you can see B not feeling good about himself right now. Once again, nobody puts B in the corner except for the Muslim, and that is going to be... The, the, you can see the Dome of the Faith was going up, is going up with only three villagers, but the, the, the outpost is going up faster than the Dome of the Faith is. If he puts villagers inside that, there's a chance that this could actually get cancelled out here. Now, we'll take a look with the Muslim and see it. We'll ride on board with him. He's got enough for arrow slits, but remember, by the time the arrow slits comes through, the villagers are... Oh, they, they should be away. Let's see if these villagers do jump inside this outpost. 
It looks like he knows that there's not enough range there for it. So instead, looking to just continue around this position, you can see him moving down towards the south. The Muslim has explored this out. And by the same token, B is looking to counteract that, bringing out the villagers, looking to siege down that outpost. He's going to have to cancel it if he wants to save that wood. You can see the villagers trying to commit that. How many villagers are we talking? That's only five villagers. Archery range is going to be coming down as well. I think he was going for a barracks originally. Scout going to be coming out, doing a bit of harassment. Looks like that. Uh, looks like the outpost is going to get up, but it's going to be very low health. And now we've got that defensive. Oop, we've got that defensive outpost. I, I apologize. Wrong button right there. That the uh, we, we now see that this outpost is secured here. So very nice use of the leapfrog mechanic. Uh, I, I wouldn't. It's probably not a mechanic. Very nice leapfrogging right there. And we see the archery ranger is going to come out. But keep in mind that early scholar uh, that came out here on the mosque it got taken out by the barbican. More outposts coming out now from the Muslim. And I'm starting to think more and more that it might be likely that B taps out very early into this game. We're 11 minutes in, and he is being focused down here in the corner. So the Muslim looking to take this corner for himself. And, you know, I guess the interesting thing is uh, Avely saying, damn, that's crazy. Uh, so we'll take a look over at Avely and see what he's got going on that, that's so crazy. Doesn't look like much yet. He could just be talking about this, but we now see that more and more of these uh, these hand cannon attacks are coming in. Next outpost comes up as well. He's looking to get in hand cannon slits and looking to fully force him off this wood line. You can see he's going to try and move in against it. The town center's got an ability to shoot. We ride on board with B for a bit, and you can see his town center's going to... should be able to shoot up towards here. Crackety now reaching the castle age already. We'll take a look at Crackety and see how he's doing. So it looks like it's going to be the monastery that's coming out for Crackety. Uh, immediately. So he's going to be looking to pick up relics. Now, obviously, towards his north, he knows that recon exists. And with that, there's going to be relics around his base. Uh, but this is a smart move by Crackety, and I like this. I think this is actually a lot smarter than going for Song Dynasty. If you can rush Castle, get there immediately, and then try and get your, your relic income in as quickly as possible, I think it's a super smart move. Because relics, let's, let's say you've got five relics, 500 gold. If this game goes for an hour, that's 30,000 gold. 30,000 gold. That's a lot of gold. That is a huge amount of gold. Double walls now going up over on the east side of the map as well. So not a lot of action at this point. And we've got Recon who's now moved over towards the eastern side. He's identified that there might be a little bit of an opening here. And we can see Sword of has actually got some outposts over here. He said, hold on a minute. I don't want you over here. Get out of here. And now Horseman actually going to be coming down. Multiple outposts coming up. And you can see he is intent. He's like, no, get out of here. You are. This is my side. You do not come and make your home over here. You get out, my friend. Outposts continuing to come up. Those archers are going to guarantee that the Muslim's not able to push up towards his position anymore. But the reality is that uh, B's not going to be able to do too much. And the Muslim probably going to be up towards Castle shortly. We'll, we'll ride on board with the Muslim and see how he's doing. Stacking up a lot of wood at this point. Probably going to be looking to add in a second, even a third town center. Maybe get to Castle Age and look to start trebbing down his enemy. Uh, but you can see that we've got Siege Engineering coming through here for B. So he's looking to survive, looking to hold on a little bit longer. Second town center now coming up for Averly as well, up to the north. Outpost is up for sort of, and we can see that there are now stables coming up by the same token for recon. So I wouldn't be surprised to see sort of actually commit very heavily in the early game to taking this out. Simtom now reaching the castle age as well. It's going to be the culture wing that he goes up with. Third town center getting added in for him. So he's looking to start taking off with his economy as well. But back towards this front, we do see that now it looks like a mill is going to be going down here for B. A smart move, honestly. A smart move for him to do that because he doesn't really have any other access. If we take a look on board with him and see where the villagers are. In fact, let's take a look at his, a look at his line of sight. So you can see there's not much going on for B right now. He is stuck in this corner. He's going to be having a battering ram coming out. You can see he's got enough resources for it. He's actually going for a second town center here. So I, I do actually like this play. I think this makes a lot of sense. Uh, but the problem that he's going to have is he's not going to be able to support that. And he kind of needs the wood for the battering ram. Honestly, the sooner you clear this out, the better you're going to be feeling. You'd ideally want to be looking to target these first, just so you can secure up this food, at least for the meantime. Uh, but we'll, we'll have a look now as uh, another outpost looks to come down here. The Muslim going to be rushing this one up. Seven villagers dropping this bad boy down. Looks like the town center should get up here as well. Uh, but Averly up in the north complaining, why can't I eat the boar? Well, Averly, unfortunately, my friend, you are the Abbasid dynasty. That is why you cannot eat the boar. But you can have these delicious berries. I'll let you. Second town center is successfully up here for, from B. So he'll be happy with that. But keep in mind, the villagers, every time they pop out, they're going to be focused down by that outpost. 
Now, in, in addition to that, the villagers here are going to be able to support these outposts. So in the event a battering ram comes through, uh, the villagers are going to be able to turn their attention towards it. So it's going to be a slow and steady push coming through uh, for B. He's got barely any resources in the bank right now, but he does have the double TC. So he's got something going for him. We'll check in with the Muslim, who's now added in his second town center. Having a look at Crackety's base, he's managed to secure two of the relics so far. There's quite a few relics up towards this northern side, but uh, I think the question is how many does he actually look to get here? Averly reaches the castle age as well. Third relic coming back in. He's being chased by a body infantry. He's making his way. I don't even know where he's going right now with this relic. I, I suspect he's going up here. Now, I ideally, what, what he wants to do is make sure he doesn't step on this sacred site. As soon as you step on that sacred site, you alert everybody what you're doing. You become a target. Recon, you know, would immediately be like, oh, you're taking my relics. Recon just reached the castle age. And you know what landmark he went for? The high trade house, baby. 198 gold coming in right there. That's a beautiful high trade house, honestly. He's going to love that. But remember, he puts himself in an awkward spot. He doesn't have a lot of room back here, but he's got more than enough to keep himself a, a happy, I guess is probably the best way to say it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we actually look to see him move up his entire base here. He knows he's in a difficult position over on this western flank. We'll tune back in over with B and see how he's doing. Whether we've got that battering ram coming down just yet. There it is now, finally coming down. And now you can actually see Recon asking in the chat, can I have this corner sort of? Let's see what sort of says, whether he responds. Because sort of is walling up like a madman. He wants to make sure that nothing gets through there. Uh, you can sort of have it, says Ava. <laughs> oh man, I love these guys. Sort of now reaching the castle age. Let's see what he does. But interestingly, no response there from sort of. Now, obviously, for anybody wondering, sort of speaks very fluent English. Uh, he knows exactly uh, what was said there by Recon. Uh, and he intentionally chose not to respond. Oh, it sort of just said, yeah, I'm chilling. Okay, there we go. So we've got the, the, the word in from sort of. He is being chilling for the moment. We see Demuslim has now reached the castle age. And with that, probably our first trebuchet is going to begin rolling in. Indeed, it is the clock tower counterweight trebuchet, the longest name in the game. And we've also got to keep for good measure because why the heck not? Keep is going to be going up. And with that, we can see the battering ram is finally coming out. But this, this is the consequence of being the deli, right? Like as the deli, you can research siege engineering for free. It just takes a really long time to do it. And now we're kind of seeing the consequence of not going for that earlier battering ram when we had the option. Like he went for a second TC and that's all well and good. But now there's a keep coming down. W look, would have that second TC early or later stopped this this from coming up? Probably not. This is a really tough spawn, especially next to Demuslim, who is incredibly competent on the Chinese. I, I would say probably if I had to rate like Chinese players or like people on the Chinese, I would say that Demuslim is top two, maybe top three. Uh, you know, up up there with Beastie. I'm trying to think of who else I would be putting up there. Um, th th there's not too many super duper good Chinese players. Five relics now coming in for Crackety. I got to say, I love Crackety's play here. This is a super smart Chinese move from him. Uh, to be able to take these relics. So this guarantees him 500 gold a minute for the rest of the game. Not to mention Tithe Barns, which hasn't been fixed yet. You're still only getting, I think it's 20 stone a minute from your Tithe Barns instead of the 30. But hey... He's also got the option for pagodas as well, but pagodas, they're kind of they're kind of a meme. Trebuchet now beginning to work down on that town center. Palace Guard's going to be running in as well. Things not looking good for B in this western corner. You know, in, in the majority of these games, B has spawned in the corner. It, it, it's interesting to note. Wait, is B deleting his buildings? I think B's deleting his buildings. B deleted his villages. He deletes all of the buildings. Is he not... What's he not giving him? Oh, he's not giving him kills. He's intentionally doing it so he doesn't give him kills. Oh, that's all. That's ultra smart move by B. So he says, yeah, you can take my landmarks. You can take my points, but you're not going to get any kills. So in the event this goes super late game, where the difference might be between like five or ten kills, he doesn't get it. B gets the point, or B gives the points over to Demuslim, though. So with that now, uh, there are seven players in the game. B is going to be the first one that does get knocked out here. Uh, I'm going to be just bringing up my... I just realized this whole time, I don't. I haven't actually had Twitch chat up, so apologies, guys. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I've, I've now got you guys up. I can now see you guys. Hey, guys. Uh, but we do see the Muslim just finishing off these, these buildings in the corner. He, he wants the space, uh, and you can see he's already moving over here, mining camp coming through. All right, so B going out once again very early. We saw him go out in the first game that he played as well as the second game quite early. Uh, so just getting some, I guess, 
not the best spawns consistently, like consistently bad spawns. But let's take a look and see what else we've got going over the map because Sword of has walled himself in uh, pretty effectively. We've got both players. Oh, oh, I see some potential for late game shenanigans up here. Now, the question is, does that come through on this side as well? It doesn't look like it. It's just going to be a one way, one way through over here. So remember, Sword of said he was chilling. Uh, so Recon going to be happy with this corner spot. Let's check in with Recon and see how he's doing. He's sitting on 610 bounty at the moment. He is under attack from this outpost, and that's going to annoy the heck out of him as well as me. But towards his main base, I mean, everything's just chilling out for him at the moment. And you... <laughs> you killed my scout, mate, says Averly. Wait. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, De Muslim and Averly now getting into a little bit of a tassel, it seems. De Muslim losing some villagers over on the gold mine. Immediately, was that an outpost that got cancelled? Uh, but uh, things now starting to get a little bit scary. We'll tune in with Averly and see how he's doing as he turns his attention towards one of the Chinese players. Keep going to get dropped down here. But it looks like a lot of damage could be happening as Averly, who has spawned quite close to Matthias. Looks to just keep his enemy at arm's distance, or at least he's, he's got to keep up here for now. Uh, and will just be buying himself a bit of time, but really turns his attention towards the Muslim, who is a big threat in the late game. Remember, we got two Chinese players here, the Muslim as well as Crackety here. And the longer you let these guys live, the more chance they've got of cockroaching a victory out. They've got a lot of landmarks that they can make. They've got a lot of amazing units that they can make in the late game. So I wouldn't be surprised if these guys do get taken out quite early. But now the Palace Guards are going to be coming through, looking to try and hold on this position. But keep in mind, those those Lancers have got pretty decent upgrades there. We'll check in with the Muslim. Over on this western side, he's continuing just to gather up stone. He, he may look to move his base over here. We see that final landmark going down to the trebuchets. So those two landmarks are dead. But you, you can see the difference. Like, you know, we, we often talk about these little things. Like, I remember one game that we watched where I think it was Recon dropped off Sheep to Beastie. And already, like, at the early stage of the game, it becomes so important because enemies can be made there. And you can see Averly getting upset that the scout was killed by the Muslim. So I'm assuming what happened was the Muslim put villagers in the town center and intentionally killed the scout of Averly. Because obviously, if Averly runs it into the town center, then it's his own fault for being, you know, for, for, for being a little bit careless with his scout. But if the Muslim puts villagers in the TC, then that shows a, a clear intent to kill that scout. And as a result, that's that's fighting words. Those are, That's fighting actions right there. And as a result, now we, we really look to see that things are starting to build up over on the Western Front as Averly is getting more reinforcements in. Also looking to put down production on this front side. Plenty of villagers running out here. We can see he's got seven out here going to be dropping down archery ranges and then a mill. So he's taking the berries for good measure. We can see him moving up towards this northern position. Wants to make sure that he doesn't find a little foothold up here. And by the same token, Averly might even think about taking it for himself. You can see the way that Averly is playing at the moment. He's, he's sort of tied himself up towards this northern edge. North, northwestern edge. Imperial Age going to be coming through. The first player of the game. It's going to be Symptom down towards the south. Now, there's a lot of walls that have come up. Crackety in particular has walled up everything. Behind this, we can actually see that Crackety has put in his Imperial Academy, chopping through and then dropping down the Imperial Academy in this position. Kind of wild. Kind of wild. But now we can actually see Recon is attacking Crackety as well. So both Chinese players under attack early in this game. Averly also looking like he might be aging up as well. So more Lancers, more Knights moving over from Averly towards uh, De Muslim. We'll ride on board for a moment with Sword Off, just so that we've got less, less sounds coming in from us. Trebuchet's unpacking. So you can see that the walls were coming up here for Crackety. He'd begun walling off everything. Bombard going to be coming out, breaking that down. We can see the walls down to the south, and you can see both players trying to wall each other out, respectively, of different areas. I wonder if Simtom ever works out that there is a landmark behind here. I'm sure that he will. I'm sure that he will. But now that attack going to be coming through. A lot of units in here as well for Crackety. How much, how much are we talking? 27 spears, 12 crossbows, and a whole bunch of nest bees. I like this. I like this. This is a smart This is a smart composition. He's got to be careful now. Spearman moving forward. Leaves himself a little bit open. At the same time, Knight's going to be coming in. Crossbows looking to try and hold in on the back line. Spearman getting a nice little brace there. Nest bees just continuing to fire off on the back line. Averly in the chat saying, You China. Demuslim asking what's going on. And then Averly responding, You China. 
And then the Muslim saying, oh, that's the only reason. And he says, yeah, sorry. So there you guys have it. You can see that China is intentionally being focused down in these games early. So, you know, it, it becomes a question of, of is China actually the best civilization in these free for all games if you're going to get focused down like if you're t if you're going to a pub like if you're playing a pub game you know the 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 mega random free for all nomad pub game then by all means like your china might be the best there is to muslims landmark gets destroyed it's the barbican up in the north oh my lord look at the trebuchet numbers out right now for Averly. he is he, he is looking menacing right now he's taking out the landmarks of the muslim and that's not a good thing for the muslim Sort of now reaching the Imperial Age. We'll check in with Sort of and see how he's doing. For anybody unfamiliar, Sort of was actually the winner in last week's game that he played, winning with a beautiful Sacred Site victory. Looks like at this stage, he's got plenty of town centers up. It's going to be the House of Learning and the main town center here, together with the Dome of the Faith. But where is that Imperial Landmark? We'll look to see if we can find it. I don't actually see it. Has he put it in a random spot? Am I blind? Oh, there it is. It's the Palace of the Sultan. He's put it in a bit of a weird spot. It's almost like, almost a forward position. Nesta bees together with the Spearmen and Palace Guards moving out towards this position. Got to be careful here. There's not a lot of units to defend this. That's six trebuchets. It, and with this, the six trebuchets, they might be expensive, but the big thing is the time that it takes to build these up. But by the time you get back up to six trebuchets, it's going to be like another five minutes before you get there. So now turning his attention, going to be focusing down all of these units and looking to take out all these trebuchets. And you can see Averly getting caught out of position here, being taken a little bit by surprise. We'll have a look at exactly how Crackety is doing on the south side. You can see he's looking to defend this position. He's holding on for dear life at the moment, but with a Rus player in the north and over towards his east, an Abbasid player, I suspect that we might have some early negotiation beginning. Trade coming through for Simtom. Once again, we've seen trade from Simtom out before playing as the Mongols. But once again, as the Abbasid, he's now going to be able to get trade going. And remember, as the Abbasid with trade, you have access to a secondary resource. So you can see that his traders are bringing in food. Some of them bringing in food, some of them bringing in stone. We can see 29 stone. So there's always going to be the potential in the late game for him to drop down that wonder without too much of a hassle because he's got that trade coming through. It's going to be really important for him to maintain that trade route though. So we can see that he's got five markets nice and close by. I suspect he's going to be pumping out traders nonstop. And now up towards the north, it looks like those Nesta B is going to continue firing down upon the infrastructure that was built up here by Averly. So the Muslim definitely showing his prowess despite being behind on the score. Crackety now reaches the Imperial Age as well. You can see he's still got that sacred site just holding it for the moment. And Crackety... We'll have a look exactly. He's gone for the three. Look at this beautiful Chinese uh, gathering right here. Where is that that landmark? We see it. Oh, oh, look at this. Classic. This is classic Chinese play right here from Crackety. Just, just throwing down a little bit of an expansion over towards the east. Why not? Why not? I like it. He's holding on for now. I don't know where that landmark is. It might. He, he might have done the war wonder. I think that could be the case. I got no idea where that wonder is though. Trebuchet is firing off. Crackety going to be holding on. Palace Guards, as well as the Spearmen fighting here. Crossbows doing their best to get in on the mix as well on the backside. But remember those horse archers, they fire off. They do so much damage. But keep in mind, they're going to be overkilling these, these Spearmen. But these Spearmen, so damn cheap, so easy to take out. Now those traps continuing to fire down upon this. Up towards the north, we can see a little bit of a push coming through. The Muslim going to be losing villagers. Was trying to go for a mining camp out here. At the same time, that Nesta B mass is beginning to build up. And we could have our, this is a bit of an interesting battle that we've got here because Averly's identified, hey, to Muslims a big threat and Recon's identified the same thing in Crackety. But the question is whether they can actually get everybody on board and look to take them down. And it looks like that might be the case as Symptom is going to begin working on the walls here of Crackety. Now, keep in mind, Crackety's got those five relics. So in the event that you do actually take him out, Tithe Barn's now coming in for him as well. In the event you take him out, there's a good chance you could snag those five relics here. Recon reaches the Imperial Age. We'll take a look and see where that last landmark went down. It's going to be... There's the monastery. Where's that high armory? I know it's somewhere around here. Oh my god, look at Krakeny's landmark. The Imperial... <laughs> good luck ever finding that one. That is a good little spot if I have ever seen one. Krakeny here just going for the secret -y, The cheekiest secret landmarks you've ever seen. The Chinese cockroach is real and it can hurt you. Oh my god. That is... Uh... That is impressive. That is a nice little landmark spot. Now, the problem is, 
don't chop through this. Do not, do, don't dare chop through this. I would get these villagers out of here. I'd get them back over on this side. You don't want to chop this out. You want, ideally, you want to leave this as much as possible and don't let your enemies know about it. That's going to be the big factor here. Down on the south side, though, Crackety continues to try and hold on here. We can hear the Springholds firing off. They've got that roller shutter triggers coming through shortly, I suspect. We'll ride on board with Recon and see how he's doing. Indeed, Bandit Arms coming through. Roller shutter triggers also. He's picking off units on the backside. Bombards, they've got that 12 range. They've got going to be able to take out all of these Springholds before that upgrade comes through. And he could look to gain a little bit of ground here. This is a smart move here. Recon might have actually, yeah, High Armory coming back in the center here. Realizing that the High Armory is going to get some good value here, considering the fact that he needs a lot of siege out here. He's got to be careful, though. You can see the Springwoods moving in. Bombard not really paying attention. Needs to focus down these, these positions. Ideally, you'd love to have a couple of villagers out here on this wood line just to move over. He's got to be careful, not paying attention to the Bombard. Now turns around. Bombard going to be going out, unfortunately, though. So that is a big loss there for Crackety at this point in the game. And remember, he needs every little bit of help he can get because he is under attack from both sides now. And he is he is getting squarely put in the corner. Now, I, I would be surprised if Crackety, as well as the Muslim, haven't formed a Chinese alliance. Ideally, these guys need to work together to make sure that they don't get focused out. We can see Averly in the early game was trying his best to focus out the Muslim. Uh, but now Demuslim managing to push back Averly and doing so pretty well. He's cleaned up this entire front at the moment. And we can hear Sacred Sites being taken. Now let's just quickly check and see how many Sacred Sites we've got on this map. We've got three. So crackety has got the first one just above Recon's base. Second one is controlled by Sort Of. Uh, so I'm going to assume it's over here somewhere. Is it over the river? It's hard for me to see. There's, there's the second one. That's Symptom. Third one is... I got no idea where that third one is. We will find it eventually. Do not worry. I, I got a feeling like it should be around here. But we'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Things have held off for the moment down here. De Muslim, did De Muslim, apparently De Muslim just said, I will give someone $50 to kill Averly right now. Hey, it's not against the rules. <laughs> it's not against the rules. <laughs> Immediately Averly, <laughs> Immediately Averly responds by walling. He's like, uh, okay, that's a problem. He, <laughs> he said it in the game, apparently. Oh my God. Immediately responds with walls. He's like, ah, uh, okay, uh, that's a problem. I got to wall up. Uh, he knows that Matiz might be thinking about it. And speaking of Matiz, someone we haven't really talked much about. I mean, he's just been, been being chilling for the moment. He's got 168 coming through from these traders on gold. He's coming all the way to the middle. We've got a little bit of a, a an, an alliance, a trading alliance right now coming out. But uh, continues Crackety does to take down this great wall gatehouse. And this is a problem for Crackety because just remember, Recon is the player that's fighting him over on the other side of the map. And if Recon kills Crackety over here. Well, he's going to be able, easily able to kill him over here. And then he puts down another Lumber Camp. No, Crackety, not like this. He's going to chop through. Demuslim now reaching the Imperial Age himself. That's not good for Crackety. Now, he's not going to lose that landmark immediately, but the problem is that that Recon's going to know where he is. So the, the Chinese, he wants to cockroach, but he's not going to be able to do it. That's going to be the problem. Now, keep in mind, down towards the south, that, that Imperial Academy is going to be able to keep him alive. But the question is going to be a matter of for how long because he is losing slowly and steadily as the Bombards come out. The Imperial Palace is going to be taken out before it barely comes up. Why did he even put this landmark here? I Imperial Palace is such a good landmark to go chuck in a corner somewhere. Go chuck it down right here. That's a perfect spot for it. But now we can see that the, the, the chop through has finally happened. And Crackety's going to become aware that Sort Of is over in this area. We'll take a look at Recon's perspective and see whether he knows as well. He kind of sees down towards this area, but doesn't know. And if anything, he's going to be kept at bay by this outpost. He's like, eh, I don't want to go out there. You know, it's 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 dangerous, all that. All that sort of jazz. But Recon really looking to push in now. Beautiful mass from him here. It makes it so hard as China going up against these banded arms. Uh, Springwoods. Just that extra little bit of range. Against the against your own bombards, it makes it very difficult to trade into. But up towards the north, it looks like Averly is still under attack. Have we got we've actually got mutual walls coming up. Matiz is now looking to wall up 
against Averly as well. So it doesn't look like Matt is has taken the bait. He's not going to take the $50 here to kill Averly. And now Demuslim going to be on the defense. We can see four nested bees at home. Keep going to be trying its best to stay alive, but Demuslim might be in a little bit of trouble. Averly is up by 5,000 score at the moment. Demuslim sitting down at 7,000. Things not looking pretty for him. Another keep going to be coming up. Trebuchet is on the backside as well, but that keep on the front side has gone down and more Culverin moving in. Averly doing a decent job of cleaning up Demuslim here. Now keep in mind, Demuslim. I mean, he's on the Chinese, Avery on the Abyssin. That's a pretty good matchup for the Chinese. Obviously, it's not a 1v1. There's a lot of different factors to consider. But the Chinese here, it's a pretty decent civilization against the Abyssin dynasty. You know, Chokunu going to do very effectively up against these camel riders. Nesta bees are great at cleaning up these these uh, these infantry units. But the main issue you're going to have with these culverin, let's see if he's able to pick them out. Because ideally, uh, th these culverin here, they, they should be able to one-shot the, the bombards on the back. But he looks like he moves back for now. At the same time, it looks like landmarks are being destroyed. It's going to be Recon that is destroying through the landmarks of Crackety. He's looking to fight back with some bombards of his own. And at the same time, the Muslim landmarks are going down. Attacks coming in. We'll, we'll ride on board with Sword Off for the moment because he seems to be just chilling out for the moment. Everything going well for him. In fact, a bit of a key push coming through from Simtom on this central trading line. We can see that Recon was once going in for, uh, for Stone down there. But now the cleanup coming through. And you can see these camel archers working together well with the horsemen as they now look for more landmarks to kill. He wants to know, where are those landmarks? Give me those landmarks. And Crackety trying to scrounge together a defense as best as possible. But at the same time, in the north, Demuza might be in trouble. Keep in mind, he hasn't, he hasn't cockroached himself out like you typically see. There's one Barbican up towards the north. He's got the, the Great Wall Gatehouse down towards the south. Astronomical Clock Tower and the Imperial Academy and all of the villagers going to get pulled now. Elite Spearman going to be coming out as well. He knows he needs to turn his attention towards these culverin. We'll ride on board with the Muslim and see how he's doing. He's got 1,200 wood in the bank. It's not close to insufficient, but it's definitely not feeling good. We'll ride on board with Averly. Averly just absolutely swimming in resources right now. He's going to be able to put endless pushes together. And now we see more production being thrown down on the front line. So just when you thought he was cleaning up that front line, it looks like it's going to be able to get rebuilt here as those villagers continue coming out. Looking to try and take down these Bombards. First Bombard going to be going down. Second Bombard going down. As long as he focuses these down, he should be able to burst through uh, the, and, and not be able to... to uh, the villagers won't be able to repair it out. But Crackety, he's still under pressure. And now you can actually see that we've got Simtom looking to clean up these. Five Relics on the ground here as well. That's going to be a nice little prize. And now they're looking for the rest of the landmarks. And we can see the outposts are coming up. Look, you can hear the Bombards going off. Simtom just going ham. Looking to defend against this. So Recon Symptom definitely seem to be working together. Clear out Crackety. Villagers were getting picked off. But he's he stopped it. So you can see that there's a little bit of an alliance. Uh, you can see the Muslim in the chat saying, Always some idiot like Averly making it very fun right there. So Averly has come across the map to kill the Muslim because he's playing the Chinese. And he's pipped him off the post. And now you got to wonder, was was this play early in the game where the Muslim... Work to take out B. Did it work against a Muslim? Because Matiz called it out before the Barbican was even finished. He said, Matiz said in all chat that the Muslim and Averly were working together. Oh, so, sorry, not, not working together. They were already fighting. Apologies. And so maybe he's called that out. And then Averly said, well, hold on. He's playing the Chinese. I'm, go I'm just going to go. I'm going to push my luck right now. We'll do like a three town center fast castle and we'll go for it. And that's exactly what he did. And he went for it and he's, it's worked out. He's put the Muslim on the back foot here. The Muslim in a really tough spot now. You can see that he, everything just falling apart for him. Still yet to really cockroach with with anything. The, the way that we see cockroaching happening over here from Crackety, cockroaching down here. He is really just playing for the long game here. More stone walls coming up for Crackety. He's really holding on. The main issue he's going to have are all these relics dropped out. I mean, this this was just... If he had been able to take these relics out a little bit earlier, he would be such a happy camper right now. If we tune on board with Crackety right now, you can see having that extra 500 gold a minute. Oh my God, it would have been so nice for him. But I guess the, the thing is, the longer it takes for them to kill Crackety, the more likely it is that they start turning upon themselves because they realize that they might be threats to each other. Now, Simtom, he's growing large down towards that south position. We can see that he's expanding out the walls quite heavily. A lot of units beginning to run through. Simtom thinks there might be a landmark behind here. Little does he know there's simply a town center at this stage of the game. Spearman going to be able to defend on this position. Looks to come out. You can see also some uh, some elite horse archers. Demuslim also being a little bit upset in the chat right now. 
We can see that uh, in, in the base of Demuslim, things aren't going well. The last landmark, it's that Great Wall Gatehouse down towards the south. And the question is if Averly knows about it and Demuslim going to surrender. There it goes. Your seventh place was the man who knocked out the eighth place. It is going to be Demuslim coming in at seventh. It is China knocked out as the second civilization here or the second player. One China remains. It's going to be crackety. And now the question is, does Averly live up to his word? Averly said that he was going for the Muslim because he was playing as China. And so the question is, if, if, if Averly is a man of his word, and he said that he was focusing to Muslim because he was China, you would expect that Crackety would be next on the chopping block right now. So let's see if he actually does that. We'll take a look on board with Averly and see if he knows where Crackety is. Oh, he definitely knows where Crackety... Oh, uh, actually, does he know where Crackety is? Yes, he knows where Crackety is. That, that is where the starting town center... Actually, where was the starting town center? There... Where was the starting town center? It was around there. That, that was it. He definitely knows. So let's see if he does that. Whether he backs off, he might might have just bought himself a little bit of space right now. Deletes all the camel archers. Hold on a minute. If he's deleting camel archers, have we got ourselves... Where is he going? What is he doing? Is he just going for a... Oh, you cheeky Averly. You weren't killing him because he was Chinese. You were killing him because you wanted the space. You were killing him because you wanted the trade post. Oh, look at that. That is a... Oh. Whoa. <laughs> and that's one of the things about free-for-all is you never know who to trust. You never know who to trust. And now all of a sudden, the trade has come out and Averly... Oh, boys. Averly is trading. And you can see in the chat, Symptom is trading heavily. You can see how important it is that trade is talked about here. But look at these traders heading back. The, this is quite the trade route. We see a purple landmark being destroyed. Uh, it is going to be the uh, the Great Wall Gatehouse over on this western front or eastern front. A single landmark remains. Does anybody ever find the final landmark for Crackety? Let's ride on board with Crackety and see how he's doing. Because remember, he can cockroach all day. As long as he's alive, as long as he's in this game, there's a potential that he gains more points. And he's looking to try and stay in it. He's gathering up those relics. The problem that he's got is he doesn't have a lot of space, though. Look at that landmark in the corner. I can't believe... You know, the wild part is... Oh, Symptom actually came up here and made a dock. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so, I mean, th that's exactly like the power of these landmarks. I, I, I just love this. The, the way that he extends out his game so much just by doing this. The fact that he chopped through this is impressive. <gasps> oh my god, Symptom dropping down the outposts. But look at this. He doesn't actually... The outpost won't be able to see over this woodline. This isn't a stealth forest. He's... Is he looking for the landmarks? I don't even know what is going on right now. Averly, let's tune back in with him. I want to check in on Averly and see. Averly is down a tan military at this point. Where are the battles beginning? Up towards the north. It looks like Recon. Doing a little bit of cleaning. He's going to be looking to clean out Averly from this position. He, he might just be looking for Crackety. And interestingly, he's never even neutralized this sacred site, which was so close to him, so easily to be neutralized. The base of Crackety remains relatively... I mean, obviously it's been touched, but he's not doing terribly. How many relics has he got in here as well? Still zero out of five? I, sw I swear I saw him th like bringing back a relic, didn't I? Oh, he's putting them in pagodas. Mm. Uh, now, for anybody playing along at home, pagodas are absolutely shit. You want to know why? Because you've already paid for tithe barns, and tithe barns actually give you more than pagodas. Look at that, dude. It's so terrible. You get... You get <laughs> Wait. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Pagodas generate 50 gold. Wait. Relic units can pick up... Hold on. Religious units can pick up relics and place them in the pagoda to generate an extra 50 gold? Is he getting 150 gold out of that? See, this is what I'm saying, right? Like, it generates 50 gold, 25 wood, 25 food, 25 stone every 30 seconds. Oh, it's every 30 seconds. So that should be 50 a minute. That should be 50 a minute. Oh, they fixed pagodas. Okay, pagodas aren't terrible anymore. It's not terrible. But it's still like, I mean, it's basically on par with tithe barns. So if you've got five relics, you might as well just keep them in the monastery and get tithe barns, right? Because you don't get tithe barns from in your pagoda. If you got Titebun in the Pagoda, it would be legit, but it's not. Like, you don't get it. 
I'm, I'm still impressed, though. Alright. I'm, I'm looking for that third sacred site. Finally, that sacred site gets neutralized by the bombards of Averly. Averly gonna be walking a separate way. Uh, I'm, I'm suspecting that there might be some, some chat right now uh, about Crackity and about where he is. He seems to have survived over here on this western front for a fair bit. He's got all the resources he needs back here. The only resource he doesn't really have is space. That's going to be the big issue for him. And you can see, I mean, he, he's got a fair bit of space down here. But the problem is these outposts are just going to be able to provide some pretty decent insight. Now, I want to take a look at Symptom. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. And remember, Symptom came for Crackity right now. If we take a look at the landmark tracker, you can see Crackity's on one landmark. It is this landmark right here. Definitely for Crackity. It's, uh, it, it's feeling good right now to stay alive. But now we've got some camels coming in. It's going to be Symptom once again looking to attack the Chinese player Crackity. These guys are getting focused down incredibly hard, incredibly fast. Trader numbers starting to build up up towards the north. We'll take a look on board with Averly and see how he's doing. It's going to be 50 traders that he's got in the bag right now. 185 economic units in total back now on the defense. Things are looking good, but definitely up towards this northern side. You've got quite a bit of an alliance. I don't know if I'd call it an alliance, but maybe a bit more of a non-aggression pact. Because they've got those walls up on either side, it definitely makes it seem like it's a non-aggression pact. If it's an alliance, you don't even see walls up. Like, we, we saw, was it uh, Recon? No, I think, yeah, State and Recon uh, last week. Oh, oh sorry, was it uh, was it Core and State? I can't, I can't remember. There, there, there was there was an alliance, let's just put it that way. And there were, there was no walls up. Now, to be fair, there, there were Mongol players involved. But still, but still. Uh, you would expect that, you know, if, there, if there's going to be an alliance... There wouldn't be walls. So this is definitely more just like, hey, you mind your own business, I'll mind mine. We could have a potential chop through coming in up here, though. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Over towards the eastern side, it looks like we've had a complete clean out. Sort of has come through. The final landmark is over here for recon. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh my. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, if there's anything to make somebody rage, it is scholars. 24 scholars. Oh my god. They're fully upgraded. They've got the movement speed. They've got the they've got the, the vision upgrade. They've got everything. I don't know what, what just happened there. We just saw some something go down, someone go down somewhere. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Horse Horse archers can shoot over the stone walls? Bro, did you see the arc on those things? Those things arc like a, a tiny little amount, and they can still shoot over the stone wall, apparently. All right, well, the spears are going to be coming in. And remember, there's going to be no landmarks in here. That final landmark down towards the south remains unseen. Despite the large amount of outposts that are down here, they shall not be found. Keep in mind, you can always come up and look to repair this one. He's been cleaned up on this north side completely. And perhaps this is what actually led Symptom towards this. You can see he's deleted the dock now. Uh, so maybe that's what led him to that. There's no ships at all in this river, with the exception of a Carrick from Matthias. Matt is looking to wall up as well. So both players walling up on this northern side. Plenty of units now continuing to reinforce. And our Chinese player is still under attack. Managing to hold on for dear life. He's got one relic in every single pagoda. Which one collects more? 30, 30, 20, 100. Actually, pagodas are good. Pagodas are good when you think about it, right? Like... 30, 30, and then 20, and then that's like 50, 50, 50. So you're getting like a, a fair bit extra out of those. An extra 20, 20, and 20. A minute. It's not terrible. Astronomical clock tower now going to go down here. Both players still fight. I, I love this. Like the, the one landmark that shall remain unseen for the rest of the game. Like it is just hiding out here. What is Crackity doing at this point? I mean, he's, he's playing for points. That is it. He's, he's trying to defend. And it goes back to that old, old thing that I, I said earlier. You know, the longer you stay alive in this corner, the more likely it becomes that Recon and Sword of start battling against each other. That they realize, well, hold on a minute. Sim or rather, sorry, uh, so Symptom and, uh, and Recon start fighting against each other. Take a look at Symptom's score right now. If we ride on board with Symptom, he's stacking up 36, 37,000 resources. That's a huge amount of resources. He's on 200 pop. He's trading like a madman right now. 
And you can see Matt is even asking in the chat anything happening. So he's playing for the long game. Let's ride on board with Matt for a bit. Someone that we haven't really talked much. Oh my God. Oh my, anything happening? Oh, any anything happening? Hey guys, anything happening? Don't mind me. I've just got 150,000 resources in the bank. Don't mind. Any Anything happening, guys? Hey guys, any, what, hey guys, anybody doing anything at the moment? Holy shit, 160 villagers right now. 160 economic units for Matt is. Wow. That is a lot. All right, we still don't see much movement. It looks like he's managed to clean up this position over towards the east. And you can see he's leaving the landmark alive. So this is a super smart move here from Sword of. He's done the math on this. So basically what Sword of wants to do, he wants to clear up this position completely of any villagers. He wants to clear it of any sort of production at all. Make sure it is empty. And that's exactly what he's doing here. So you can see he's, he's wiping it out. And he wants to leave the landmark. Now, if he's super smart, what he does is he puts a mill down right next to it and starts farming the deer because that is a big brain play. Uh, but not going to be the case today. Not going to be the case today. You can see a villager here with carrying 20 wood. He must have that upgrade. I think there's an upgrade that you can get from the House of Learning that gives you an extra five wheel bar barrow capacity in age four. I don't know the, uh, what, what it is, the name of it off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that there is. Looks like Crackety slowly but steadily getting cleaned up. Now, remember, there's no Mongol players in this game, so you're not going to be getting that extra stone from killing buildings. Crackety doing a decent job of staying alive over on this side. We'll check in with him and see how he's doing. 147. That's impressive. How is he still on such a high population, despite being 2v1'd? He's trying to get a keep up as well. They're burning burning down the house, quite literally. It is a pagoda that they're burning down. Uh, it's going to take some time for them to get through it. Up towards the north. We see some fishing boats just chilling out. Recon just hanging out for the moment. Recon actually looking to try and break through here against sort of. But you can see that there is a, there's going to be sort of an impediment. We'll take a look at the, if there's any other potential ways across. You can come across this way, but that's been walled out pretty well. No chance of breaking through. He's going to need a transport ship over. Actually, if you transport ship over... Oh, you get through to the main base. Oh, damn. Oh, that, that is a huge potential hole. He could bring villagers and go for a transport ship. Let's see if he looks to do that. Because he's been kicked out of that eastern position. Now, remember earlier in the game, Recon actually asked sort of. He said, hey, oh, he's, he's killing the landmark. Don't kill the landmark. Okay, he doesn't. Okay, good, good, good. He's walling in the landmark. He's keeping the deer. He's making a special deer hotel where every deer gets to come and live peacefully. And the best part is it's actually a breeding program. The more... The more time you wait, the more deer you get. And he's going to save up all the deer. It is going to be absolutely awesome. But yeah, remember earlier, Sword of said he was chilling. He was absolutely fine with Recon coming over here, building up a base. And it's all for the long game, right? Like he knows if I kill Sword of early, if I wipe him from here, then there goes my three points. But if I wall in his wonder or his landmark, if I let the deer grow, then maybe one day... I will get myself some three points. And indeed you will. Indeed you will. In the event that you get the kill on that last landmark. Crackety once again holding on for dear life over on this western front. Under attack. And look at... Can we just take a look at, at, at a minute? Sorry. Can we just take a, a minute to admire the base right now of Symptom? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. He doesn't know. He still doesn't know. He's chopping the wood, but he's not chopping this one. He still doesn't know. You know why he's chopping this wood as well, don't you? You know exactly why he's chopping this wood. Ladies and gentlemen, he's thinking about it. It starts with the W. And I'm not talking about a win. I'm talking about a wonder, baby. We'll look to see how he plays it, though. Continuing to hold on against Crackety. Hand cannon is coming out. Bombards as well. Working in tandem. We see the Manganel looking to fire off down upon these units. Spearman looking to take it out, but unfortunately going to be losing its life to those Bombards. And Crackety's starting to look pretty decent. Looking a little bit scary. He's down 14,000 score. He's only got 9,000 score in the bank, but he is holding on for dear life. You can see just how far this base of Simtom has come out. This is where the starting Barbican was for Crackety. Remember? The main town center went down just up here. Barbican was here. That's how big the base is right now. Crackety is holding on. A lot of spears and now some Hank and he is going to be coming out as well. I'm a poet and I know it. Things looking good for him. St oh my god, Crackety's still yet to get the Siege Works upgrade from his university. Landmark comes down for Crackety. He's going to be getting that extra 10% health now. 
He is in the Ming Dynasty. He has made it. Now, interestingly, he doesn't have... Can we take a look? Okay, he's got reload drills. But doesn't have the university upgrade. Also doing a bit of long-distance shopping here. Okay, there we go. Gonna be throwing down that lumber camp. Relics getting snagged away. Avely taking out one of them. There's more relics to be taken. And you can see that he's actually getting hit from three sides. So maybe Avely meant, meant business when he said that he's coming for China. Because it definitely seems like... I mean, Krakeny's in a bit of a difficult spot. But remember, the gatekeeper here, quite literally. <gasps> oh, he spots it. Oh, he spots it. Symptom has discovered it. And now we can see they're firing down upon it. It's the last landmark here. I don't know exactly what happened there. I don't know why they chopped through, but he's now realized it. And you can see the torches have come out. This could be Krakeny's last hurrah. Remember, he's still got that final spirit way over in, in that corner. But it definitely seems like can't touch this. He's no longer playing inside the head of Krakeny here. Instead, I feel like it's apologize that is coming out for Crackety right now. He just wants to say sorry. He just wants to say, look, hey, I didn't I didn't choose China. China chose me. And I just want to apologize because at the end of the day. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. But you guys get what <laughs> you guys get what I mean. It's it's not looking good for Crackety right now. That final landmark may get scouted out. You can see Crackety definitely looking to try and hold on from this heal point. We're at the 55th minute into the game, and Crackety still manages to get these landmarks around the map. Still got this great wall gatehouse over in the corner. Yet to be taken out. Sort of looking to push in down upon Symptom. He knows that the score is starting to blow out a little bit and he starts to worry. But just remember, the real threat here is not the score leader. It's Matiz. Matiz is the is the real threat here. Because enemy destroyed landmark. It's down here. Symptom takes out that landmark and with that, a single landmark is going to be remaining for Crackity here. One landmark remains. Hold is coming through. We don't know whether this has been spotted out just yet. Bombard's looking to do a little bit of a kiss right now. Trying to take out this Bombard on the front. Managing to take... Oh, it's not... Oh, oh. They trade out three for one. Look, in, in some circles, this is not considered a good trade deal. I will say that much. Uh, some would even say the worst trade deal. Big push coming in over from this this eastern side still. Symptom going to have to deal with this. He is pushing over on the west. We'll, we'll take a look at him. He's sitting on 171 economic units at the moment. I want to just remind you guys. Averly is over here as well. 168 military units. Or uh, economic units rather. So that's going to uh, that's gonna be a big threat. But the other big threat of course is Matias. Who is just casually maxed out at 100,000 food. Hey guys, anything happening? Hey, hey guys, what's going on? Anybody doing some stuff? Matiz is literally playing one hour no rush right now. He's capped out on, on food. And now the big push is coming in. You can see Recon together working. With Symptom. A lot of these knights and horse archers are going to be looking to come in. Take out these bombards. Spearman on the front side. Managed to skewer in a couple of those knights. They're going to be able to escape the bombards. Going to be able to take out their opponent towards the north we've got big battles beginning to unfold as well attacks happening all over the map it looks like it's just going to be a couple of fishing boats getting in on the action towards this outpost elephant as well walls coming up that's cool oh my lord that's quite a way towards that house of wisdom a lot of outposts back here as well uh interestingly not a lot of emplacements on these bad boys though he's got outposts but just no emplacements it can be hard to differentiate which ones have got emplacements and which ones don't. Crackety continues to hold. He is holding right now. Hold. Hold, Crackety. He is holding. And the longer he takes... Oh, he's up to 13,000 wood right now. He's literally just gathering up wood at this point. Hold. Oh, God. Okay, that's where it starts to get scary. Oh, God. Okay, Recon is looking to do a little bit of Recon here with a couple of his horse archers. Uh, it's going to be tough for the hold here to happen. We'll see how he looks to play it as more villagers come out over towards the Astronomical Clock Tower. They're going to be taken out very quickly as the Bombards look to try and do a bit of a dance there. They're going to unfold, but unfortunately they've unfolded a little bit too early at the same time towards the north. He's getting pushed in from Averly. This could be the final defense of Crackety here. 
As Recon looks to try and push in, keep in mind it's that last landmark that matters and people know where it is. It's on 3,200 health at this point in the game and the Bombards continue making their way down. Going to be taking out the barracks as they do it. Sacred Sight being captured in the middle. Crackety sneaking a couple villagers down. He thinks he can get it. Let's see if he does it. He might be able to hold himself in the game as the Bombards continue coming through. Crackety going to be working on this repair. He's going for it. Here we go. Let's see if he's going to be able to do it in time. He's up to 10% health. A little bit of a stall right there. I don't think he's got it though. Tw no, 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 rest in peace, sweet prince. It was it was a pleasure watching you, Crackety, but unfortunately, you are taken out and you are tonight sixth place in this second game of week number three of the Outback Octagon. Rest in peace, Crackety. It took you one hour to die, but uh, I'll be honest, I'm impressed. Uh, now, for anybody playing along on YouTube, on Twitch, we actually had a a bet. Uh, we have this thing called predictions. Basically, you can make a prediction. And so I asked Twitch chat, I said, do you think that China is going to be 8th and 7th place respectively in this game? Now, obviously, we saw B get picked out early in this game. But you can see why it might have been such a close bet. Because the reality is they finished 7th and 6th. It was a very close bet there. Honestly, in my opinion, it was like, I, I, I thought that could have gone 8th and 7th very easily. Trader Highway getting a little bit broken down here. Symptom, unfortunately, getting walled out of this position, I suspect. But uh, yes, it, it seems like the faithful uh, for China not coming last today have been rewarded. And so now where do we go from here? Now, remember, Recon has still got... Recon has still got his... Uh, his, his landmark over here in the corner. The high trade house. Just gathering up 264 food a minute, by the way. A lot of dead traders over in the middle. Symptom losing a lot of units there. I'm not sure why they decided to go that way. It may be that he walled himself out. I don't know exactly what happened there. Oh, he lost the market. I think the market got sniped by, uh, by sort of. Indeed it did. Oh my lord. We'll take a look now at Symptom. He's got a huge mass of bombards. Bombard's now looking to try and mount this hill. You can see them slowly but steadily getting over it, forcing back sort of away from this position. Sort of looking for points. Speaking of points, take a look at that. 20 scholars just casually hanging out, looking to provide some healing assistance here. Bombard's going to be more than effective at sniping out those scholars as well as those elephants in the event that they become a bit of a hassle. Nice little quick wall coming up here, sort of going to be preventing any, any transgressions from coming through. At the same time, this buys more time for Recon in the middle. Remember that. Recon sits here happily, just being chilling for the moment. No wonders yet for anybody at this stage. But we do a little bit of a stock take and check where these guys are at. You can see plenty of resources in the bank. In fact, Averly, he's going to be trading on stone. He's under attack at the moment. We can see the stone is coming back. It's going to be that bombard or that uh, cannon emplacement just firing down upon the walls here. Uh, so it's going to be very frustrating. Now, the question is, how easy would it be for a snipe to come out? If Matiz wanted to kill the House of Wisdom and the Town Center, how easy would that be? Really easy. Really, really easy if you wanted to. Think about it from the perspective of, okay, if, if we're talking about like a typical fight, like between two big guys with two big bases, you, let, let's use Recon and Simtom as an example. For Simtom to defend, he's got all of this defending, like all of this space here, is his defense because he's going to be doing reinforcements the whole time and then finally you make it back towards the house of wisdom whereas up towards the north Averly has got quite literally nothing between his town center and the bombards that will eventually and inevitably break through this position so if i'm Averly right now i'm scared i'm very scared uh of of matthews and by the same token matthews could be easily taken out by Averly. uh so we see council hall main town center Wingard Palace. The question is, where is that King's Palace, though? I might be blind. There it is. So King's Palace, a little bit south of that main town center. Bombard's continuing to roll through now. Down towards the south. Looking to try and pick this up. Oh, we've got transport ships coming in. Oh, he's going to do a little bit of a switcheroo. He, he says, you know what? I'm not even fussed about the walls. You can keep them, mate. I'm going straight through. It's a bit of a walk, though. It is a bit of a walk, but he's going to look to transport across. And we can now see that they're... they're I think he might have realized that Springles and Bombard's moving around the corner. 
Unit's going to be jumping inside the transport ship. Keep in mind the health on those transport ships, only 600. He's going to be able to secure a little point down here. Oh no. Oh no, the bombards all jumping in. Oh no. Oh, oh. Oh. Manages to get it through. Oh, that could have been close. All the bombards getting out in the same spot. Averly over on this western front. Being attacked by a couple of warrior monks. Still we hear that ex that uh, cannon emplacement just firing off. At the same time, more villagers on this front. No real active fronts at the moment. The main one that we're focusing on here is over towards the east of the map. It's going to be Simtom pushing forward with plenty of bombards. Or rather, yeah, Simtom pushing forward with plenty of bombards. Oh my god, Simtom could actually take out this, this uh, landmark. He knows that this landmark would be just being... It's being held hostage right now by, uh, by sort of, just to gain those extra points. I guess the other alternative is that he just leaves them. Scholar's just looking to come in, going to be trying to delay this a little bit. Fortunately being sacrificed. It's a, it's a religious sacrifice, so it is, uh, it is something that we do see a fair bit. But unfortunately, they will have to go the way of the dodo. Did... Did... Did that camel just die to trebuchets? I'm pretty sure that camel just died to the trebuchets wasn't enough now bombards gonna be in a bit of a tough spot you've got 12 bombards over here but it looks like you've barely brought a spearman and as a result it means all the horsemen gonna be able to run in landing in on top this is a lot of resources that are gonna get thrown away from simtom and you might not think that that's a big deal but remember it takes a long time to build this up a long time to get back over here and now they've resorted to attacking walls and with that all of the bombards gonna go bye bye and sort of gonna pick himself up a very happy position over here securing this once again nice little front Reinforcements now coming across once again for Symptom, but you got to ask at what cost? At, or, is there even any point to coming across right now? <sighs> Feels bad, man. That was like that was like fifteen thousand resources that just went down the drain. You should probably want to take this out, honestly. I'm kind of I'm kind of worried about Matis, honestly. Matis is saving for a house right now, and I I feel like in in the middle of this property boom. He could probably afford about a thousand houses at this point. He is looking like an absolute landlord. Bombards firing off in the middle towards those reinforcements. Recon looking to do a bit of damage to sort of. Do we have ourselves a bit of a team up here? Is it the South Boys? Is it Recon teaming up with Simpton potentially? Our score leaders. Rather, our score leader. But Simpton only sitting on 12,000 score. So not a huge threat. Let's take a look at the resources and see where we're at. Simpton sitting at about... What is it? About, about 35, 37,000 resources. Recon next to him. About the same. A little bit over 45. Matt is sitting on 240,000 resources. Everything is fine. Sort of. 70,000 resources. And Averly. Damn, dude. These, these guys in the north, you got to watch for them. Like, Averly is trading, guys. But not just Averly. Matt is as well. These guys playing it very patiently, very passively. Up towards the north, the trade continues unfolding. Look at the... Oh my god, look at the bombards coming out. Let's, let's get a quick count on those bombards from Simtom. We'll take a look now. 146 bombards out for Simtom. A little bit of a push coming through. Spearman going to be coming out. Unfortunately, looks like these bombards might be going out. Indeed, they do. Moving towards the front, donating themselves over. You can see that there, there is a new beachhead that has been made here, but I think it might be shut down very quickly. Sort of doing a great job over here. We'll take a look back towards the north, and just for now, we see the bombards moving out. A lot of bombards here for recon. Continuing to make, make way through. It could be that Sort of has become the target here. I think recon might have teamed up here with Simtom, to take down sort of but then the question becomes you know if, if that gets realized do we then see them potentially do we see the guys in the north look to potentially take them out oh my god i've just realized oh my lord i am Averly. oh my god it's beautiful does that extend all the way? Does that network extend all the way? It does, dude. It does. How many buildings does he have? <laughs> just a ca just a casual. 
We see that landmark go down. It's going to be over on the east. It is indeed that uh, high trade house going down. He's just got a casual 253 buildings uh, in his uh, in, for his golden age. They should make a fourth. All right, things still looking pretty decent up on this north side. Hold on. Hold on. What have we got here? Some scouts coming through from Avery. He might be looking for landmarks. If you see scouts, you know you're in trouble. Where are these guys going? Oh my lord! We've got our first potential backstab. Trebuchet is looking to break down the town centers here. Matt is, has said, I've had enough. But remember, he's open from the western flank. He's open from the western flank. Oh, everything is coming up. Millhouse right now. Matiz is in trouble. Taking a look. We've got Recon who's actually come across. He's got horse archers. He's broken into the base. He's done a little bit of a transport wazoo. He's spotted out the gap between here. Look at this. Recon has spotted out that there is a gap. He's found his way through. And now sort of might be in, uh, in sort of trouble. Matiz may have overextended here. Has he played his hand a little bit too early? He's on the English. He's got a beautiful late game. Treb's looking to fire down upon these bombards. Sort of going to be looking to hold on. Averly sitting on 100,000 gold right now. 70,000 food. Still only barely 6,000 stone. So that's the second time we've seen a player reach 100,000 gold. Beastie Cutie, obviously the first one to do it. Uh, looks like all these units are going to be chased out away. Manages to get all of them in to the uh into the transport ships but the spearmen are just like oh well they got in transport ships so i don't know we we can't deal with that there's no possible way that they can we'll change our perspective over to sort of and we'll see where he's under attack right now oh my lord it's everywhere he's in trouble symptom attacking him from the south bombards moving in looks like that beachhead has well and truly been established down here he was never really able to close it out and now as a result symptom is over here and symptom is causing havoc you can see the resources in the bank aren't looking pretty. He's got 139 military pop at the moment. Not being attacked the conventional way. So normally you'd expect to be attacked across these crossings. Hence the name crossing. But that is not the case. He's been attacked here. You know, we've seen him attacked on water. We've seen the transport ship come over for the beachhead. Uh, and, you know, he's been attacked in these unconventional ways. And of course, he's been, he's been attacked by his neighbor, which I don't think even he was expecting. Matt is looking to clear out these landmarks. Now, remember, we've got four landmarks for our Delhi player. Our Palace of the Sultan. Our House of Learning. Our Primary Town Center. Our Capital. And our Dome of the Faith. More attacks happening all over the map right now. Gets cleaned up in the middle. A little bit of a counter raid coming through. Things not going well for Simtom. It definitely seems like he might be the next player that gets knocked out of the game. Did I say Simtom? I meant sort of. Sort of holding on. A lot of spear in here. Now, remember, he doesn't actually have any gold coming in at this point in time. We'll take a look at the relics. The crackety. Looks like they've all been picked up for the moment. I think Averly was the one to pick them up. He's got four relics in the bag right now. So all that gold's going to be trickling in towards him. A little bit of a counterattack coming in. Sort of trying to deal with this beachhead. But the problem is now you've got town centers coming up. You've got a whole new world that's building over here. Symptom is really looking to get out. And now Camel's going to be coming as well. Things not looking good for Symptom. He's trying to defend on multiple fronts here. He's facing towards his north, the Englishman. Towards his south, he's play facing the, uh, the Abbasid player. And then across the water, he's also got the Rus player that's doing drops on his base. Fortunately, there's been no bombards that have come in. Can you imagine like five bombards just here on the shorefront, just taking out all these buildings here? Oh man, it would be terrible. Double trebuchet on the backside. Bit of a push coming through from Matiz. He's got the outposts up as well. Looking to get emplacements on these bad boys. Fortifying the outposts. And now we see Sordov looking to try and hold on. He's got the elephant on the backside. No scholars here to heal up. Men at arms on the front dealing out plenty of damage. He's got five extra armor on those bad boys. Those guys are true chads. Down towards the south. It looks like the push is going to be held for the moment. People looking to definitely gang up on sort of. I'm not sure exactly why. He's playing the Delhi in the late game. Maybe they've identified that the Delhi are a super late imperial threat. Not really. They're not. I don't know why you're focusing down sort of, guys. I got no clue. I guess it's probably just because of alliances and backstabbing and all that kind of stuff. You can see sort of saying in the chat right now, this 3v1 is messed up, Sag. Indeed, sort of. Indeed. 
Sag. Unfortunate circumstances for sort of. Matt is really doing a, a number on him. But remember this whole time. Averly is trading. So a Averly is really the one that's gaining a lot out of this. Look at the resources. For He's up to 12,000 stone. He could, he could literally drop two wonders. Can you drop two wonders? Oh my god, could you drop two wonders? Um, make a wonder here, make a wonder there. Good luck. And what if they don't know? What if they don't know? What if you make two wonders and they don't know? Claw is saying no. Oh, apparently you can't. Damn. Imagine if you could. Okay, I'm, I'm calling upon the devs right now. Allow us to make two wonders at the same time. Look at the base here from Matthias. It's huge. They're so close to each other, though. I think Averly's best bet is going to be a wonder right here. And I think he knows it as well. The problem is that if he ever tries to go for a wonder, he's just going to get sniped. So he's got to defend both of these positions. Ideally for Averly, like, I would be clearing this out and I would be claiming this. Clear this out completely and claim it. Like, slowly move forward. Sort of trying to defend. We can see more and more units coming out for him. He's really struggling here. I don't know how these units got through. Looks like a couple of villagers still in here. Plenty of villagers still in here, actually. Recon's lost his 264 gold a minute. Stone walls have now come up here as well. The defense continues. And it looks like now we've got a bit of a clearance happening. Recon has said, well, hold on a minute. That Averly guy, he's a little bit close for comfort. Maybe we got to get rid of him. Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe the, the idea that Averly is trading uncontested right now could be a problem. Could be a problem. Let's check in with Averly. He, he's only got 95 traders, guys. It's fine. It's fine. It's it's not a big threat. I mean, we, we saw Wham is trading when he had two traders. Averly is trading. He's got 95. I haven't heard a peep out of these guys yet. Still, Matis looks to continue pushing down. We don't see any landmarks that have gone down just yet. We've got all four of them still standing strong for sort of. He's managed to hold on a long time right now. But the question is, how much longer does he look to hold on? Now looking to, once again, engage. Horseman going to be doing a bit of a wrap around here. Hand cannon is on the backside. Men at arms looking to run back. A big mass of horsemen going to be able to try and get through. Beautiful little block coming in. Spearmen as well working together. A lot of damage on those guys. 17 damage for those spearmen. Not too bad. Horsemen now going to be heading back towards the trebuchets. They know that's where the money is right there. They go straight towards them. First trebuchet is down. Second trebuchet going to be going the way of the dodo as well. And we see a nice little clean up here once again from Sword Off. At the same time down towards the south. Have we had a clean up down here? No, we have not. The bombards are slowly rolling through. But uh, I suspect it's going to be a clean up right now. I've been asked to, to move this box a little bit more down. Hopefully that's a bit better for you guys. Raycon once again going to be looking to get some transport ships across. Oh, 11 bombards. Oh, that's good. Bombards are going to be the key here. Remember, he, he's trying to hold on towards his position. We can see Matt is really doing his best to push through. Not having a lot of, lot of success. We'll check in with Sordov and see how he's doing. Oh, things aren't looking pretty for him. He's down to 300 food right now. And now looking to close out this game. Feeling bad for Sword of right now. It's been a tough 3v1 for him. Matt is, as well as Symptom. As well as Recon looking to take him out. But the question is, who's going to be able to get those last landmarks? That's going to be the key factor here. Players going to be looking for that. And now we start to see the first landmark going down. It's going to be that House of Learning. <gasps> Transport ships looking to get caught there. Symptom was came in. He came in quickly. Very, very quickly. Oh my lord, look how fast those camels go. They're keeping up with the ships. That is some fast camel right there. How, how fast do those things move? 1.87 movement speed? Transport ships are 1.72. They li What are you doing? Transport ships going to be dropping off on the other side of the river right now. Towards the north, the battle continues to unfold. I, I think that was a couple of scouts that just came through. And still we see this, this line towards the north that has just been held for the most part. Sort of continuing to hold out in the center here. And now we see the bombards moving forward. 
And with this, there is the potential for four to remain. And that is going to be your last threshold to drop down that wonder and grab those extra juicy points. Nice little block coming through. You can... Hold on. Is he... I, I think... Are they helping each other out? Yeah. Okay. They're, they're helping each other out. I thought Simpton was coming in to deny the Bombards, but it looks like the Bombards are just going to be used here. Bombards now going to begin firing down on that House of Learning. I don't think there's any way that sort of holds this. And unfortunately for him, the Bombards are definitely going to be what sealed the deal here. We can see that Palace of the Sultan is down there. A lot of units attacking each other here. Bombards staying back on the backside. Where does he look to go? If he focuses down the Palace of the Sultan, he almost gives, almost certainly gives over the kill here uh, to Matias. And that's not what he wants to do. One landmark is down. Second landmark going down right now. Bombard's getting taken out by Simtom. We've got ourselves a little bit of friendly fire. Keep in mind, this is a free-for-all and that's what happens. And now, like vultures, like hyenas, like lions, they fight over the dead gazelle. That is sort of. And with that, the Bombards go down. All of the Bombards, the primary siege weapons, are going to be going down here right now. Springhold's looking to fall back away from this position. You can see there's not a lot of siege in this. It seems like Matthias is doing a great job here. But that primary landmark down towards the south, it's going to be the Palace of the Sultan still stands strong. So even if he takes out this landmark, the Dome of the Faith in the north, there is the possibility that he doesn't get the points here. Bombard. Double bombard. A lot of units here. Simpton might be able to clean this one up. But keep in mind, if, he, if it goes down too early, I think these guys are racing for the bomba for, for the kill. But the problem is that that isn't Sordov's last landmark. His last landmark's up here. And now we can see Sordov trying to defend it. Trying his best to defend it. But unfortunately for him, all the siege continue to move through. Three landmarks down. It's going to be the fourth landmark that's remaining. The question is, does Simtom know? Still, we see those men at arms sieging it down. There's the potential for a bit of a snipe to come through. A lot of bombards now coming in through for Simtom. He could look to take this out. Attention still not yet turned, and the Dome of the Faith is burning. 1,300 health. Bombard moving up. It's being focused down by almost exclusively. We've, we've now got some units in here. I don't know who it's going to be. This is so damn tight. I've got to make a suspicion that it's probably at that point Matt is, but we will get the play-by-play. The -play. We will make sure that admin determines who the victor is there. But unfortunately, sort of is going to be your fourth place, or rather fifth place finisher here. And now there are four. You're two to the south, you're two to the north. Spawning in on the English as the teal, we've got Matt is. Next to him as his neighbor, Averly on the Abbasid. In the south. On the orange. As the Rus. We've got Recon. And in the purple. Playing on the Abbasid Dynasty as well. We've got Symptom. These are your final four. Who will come out victorious? Who will be taken out? That is the question. And now the battle begins. Averly has woken up. You've awoken the snake. Now finally. Averly's like. Oh, you know what? Maybe that is a bit close for comfort. <laughs> Look at those outposts, dude. Maybe it is a little bit close for comfort. Did he? Does he extend that across here with the dock? I think he does, right? I think it's the dock that extends that. If that river was any bigger, he might not have been able to extend it. Bombard. Oh my. Oh. Oh. Oh, you know what he's doing. Rewall coming in now. And the question is, where do we go from here? Because at this point in the game... We've got a little bit of a stalemate. Down towards the south, it was evident that Simtom and Recon seem to be working well together. Over on the east, that landmark has been rebuilt. So somehow, someway, Recon has gotten back behind here. But keep in mind, Simtom is aware. Simtom spots this. He knows about this, that the rebuild has happened. Bombards looking healthy right now for Averly. 12 Bombards begin it's going to be the first town center that looks to come down keep it just going to get focused down immediately a lot of units on the backside here matt is going to be looking to reinforce this position bombard just doing bombard things yeah there you, there you go buddy there you go he's going to have to fall back from here villagers coming out looking to try and drop down a keep a lot of units moving forward he's going to have to fall back you can see just how many gates he's got up here 
All the villagers going down to a single outpost emplacement. Rather, single cannon emplacement. But now the question is, how many... Does Avery just delete all of his units? Or all of his villagers? He's down to 96 right now. 95. And now we've got Simtom pushing into the base of Recon. Couple of scouts out, a warrior monk as well. Couple of lancers. He's going to be trying to hold on. But at the same time, the horse archers are dealing a lot of damage. We can see huge reinforcements also coming through for Simtom. And the traders have finally made their march out here as well. So Simtom looking to take advantage of that trade. But he's going to be pushing up against the English in the north side. Averly up against Matthias. Now, when we look at the numbers here, they're looking pretty damn healthy for Averly. The only issue he's really going to have is wood. More attacks down to the south. Continuing to come through now. Look at the horse archers holding. Honestly, Recon with the horse archers have been insane this game. He never got incendiary arrows? Are you serious, Recon? He never got biology! Recon! Are you serious right now? You've been playing a 90 minute game and you got neither biology nor incendiary arrows. I'm surprised you got the elite upgrade. I'm surprised you got mounted precision. I'm surprised you even got plus three. Why, why do we even get upgrades? Who needs upgrades? Recon just doing work here. He, he doesn't need upgrades. Oh my God. <laughs> Where I love these masses of bombards that happened in the late game. 17 bombards up here. How many bombards do we have over here? Who knows? They're all dead now. Good little defense coming in from Matthias. Wasn't quick enough of a kill. I mean, realistically, probably could have gone for the kill. I think you just ignore the keep. You kill the King's Palace first, then the TC, then the Council Hall, but then the wing... Yeah, yeah, you kill the... Mm, that's pretty far away. Oh, no. Is he making a... Oh, he's just... I think he's just making a run for it. Oh, I think he's just making a run for it. Little bit of a wig out right there. Villagers going to be trying their best to hold up the Bombard mass. Recon going for it. 12 Bombards still remain. Getting focused down now. You can hear the emplacements firing off upon them. Cannon emplacements doing a great job. I don't think this is going to come up at all. He's got barely enough units here. I don't even think he's going to be able to make it. The Gauntlet going to be tried to be running down. But unfortunately, one shot, two shot, three shot. Everybody dead. Unfortunate. I think next time he might look to clear out these outposts. But just remember... You've only got 10 range, and these outposts have also got 10 range. So every single time you do it, you're going to be taking significant damage there against those. Towards the north, we see that we've got ourselves a little bit of a counterattack coming in. It's going to be the high armory that's going down. We'll do a bit of a track on those landmarks and see where we're up to. Recon on two landmarks. So losing the main town center, also losing the high trade house, uh, wherever it was. Oh, I think it was over here, wasn't it? Yeah, it was over here. Right, trade house and now we see the high armory going down and ladies and gentlemen there is one landmark remaining for recon let's see if simtom can spot it does he know where it is he knows where it is the question up oh. hmm. all right your fourth place for this evening it is going to be recon because i don't think there's any way he's going to be able to repair back this town center at all you can see the, the, the high trait of the golden house. The golden house. The golden gate over here. And good game. Recon is going to be your fourth place. And now there are three. And immediately Averly drops a wonder. Oh, it's not here? There it is. It is the prayer hall of Ukba. It is going down in the back of the base here for Averly. Now, I think you'd be able to shell down. I think potentially you'd be able to actually take down that prayer hall from this position up here on, on this little hill. Simtom calling it out in chat saying red making a wonder. And now these two players are going to look to turn their attention towards the one player in the north. Now remember, enemy destroyed Matiz's landmark? Hold on. Enemy destroyed Matiz's landmark. No, that's, that's, yeah, this is Matiz. I always get confused with the color. So it's that main town center that's going down. So he's, he's actually looking to clear this out. Sprinkles on the backside. Clearing out. I always, I always get so confused with, with that notification. 
I wish it would just say like, I am Averly killed Matisse's wonder. New objective, destroy I am Averly's wonder. It's going down. I'm yelling timber. Look at that fat boy right there. Look at that chunky boy. Damn. That's a chonker. That is a chonker right there. You can see in the chat, they're saying lies. We can kill him in time, says Symptom. Indeed. The numbers are starting to look really good here for Matis with these trebuchets. These trebuchets are building up. And remember that it is highly likely that Averly just simply dies before the wonder does. But players may look to anchor towards that wonder. And that's going to be a problem. But you can see that keep going down. With that keep going down, there's a spot right here where you can very easily treb down that prey hall of Ukba. So we'll look to see if he does it, whether he looks to make it through, but things not looking good right now for Averly. That's a big investment of resources. Now, if Matiz was playing this smart, he could go for his own wonder and make sure that he doesn't actually kill off Averly. He just fights him, but he doesn't kill him off. And he waits right until the end. Apparently, you guys still can't see the most recent chat image. Uh, most recent chat message. I'm going to bring it down a bit more. Like that. Hopefully, you guys can see it now. Apologies. It's only been 90 minutes that you guys haven't been seeing the chat. <laughs> Trev's looking really good right now for Matt is. So, like a, a little bit of theory, though, that, that you could throw out here is that what Matt is should do is leave Averly alive as much as possible. Drop down his own wonder. Because if we take a look at Matiz, he's going to have more than enough resources to drop his own wonder. So he could drop his own one and then say, oh yeah, get, get red, get the wonder. And then just keep draining him up towards the north. But don't push. Just just drain him. And then force Symptom. Not force, but you know, encourage Symptom. Hey man, like you got to help me. But then Symptom might even think about sacred sites. That's always a possibility. He could think about sacred sites. So there's a, there's a lot of levels to this. But at this point, Matiz looks like he might be even able, able to roll over Averly. And so now it, now it really comes back to this whole thing, right? Where we were talking about it earlier. If, when you spawn so close to your enemy, is there much point in making a late game play like this for the victory if your enemy is going to prevent that in the late game? Because if we look down to the south, okay, as an example, you can see the amount of base that Symptom's got here between his nearest enemy. There are a lot of reinforcements that are going to interrupt any potential attack. Whereas up towards the north, there is nothing. There's no space. And because there's no space, there's no space for reinforcements. And with no space for reinforcements, it makes it very easy for your enemy to continue pushing through and gaining ground. And with that, they now gain the potential to hit your Rehola Vukba. Trev's doing a decent job here. Slowly but steadily just taking out all of these buildings around the back. Looking to push through, we see Symptom turning his attention towards an outpost. A couple of bombards coming down as well. We'll track that wonder. 11 minutes at the moment for Averly. Little bit of a push back now coming through. Averly finding, finding his feet all of a sudden. There's always the potential for a wonder to come down here and look how far away that would be. I, I feel like if a, if a wonder ever came down here for Symptom... It's just too hard. There's no way he does it. I mean, he's just... He just doesn't have enough resources. He's got enough to deny it from his enemy, but I don't think he's got enough to actually dish it out himself. And now you can see knights coming in here. And so this is what I was talking about. Like, th this this makes... It, this is really good against Symptom and against the position that he's got. But the problem that you're going to have here is not Symptom. The problem that you're going to have here is Matthias. Good little mass here that's starting to build now for Averly. He's starting to look a bit better. Sacred Sight is being captured. Sacred Sight is being captured, but I don't think he's going to do it before the 10 minute mark. We'll take a look at the Sacred Tracker. He's got one out of three at the moment. Symptom is on zero. Matiz has got one. Now we know where the first Sacred Sight is. We know where the second one is. So who's got the third one? Matiz has the third one? Is it over here? Oh my God, it's over here. Oh, you're never getting a Sacred win. Sorry, bro. That is, that is very hard to hold. That makes it tough when they're, when they're on both sides of the river. But now up towards the north, Trebuchet's once again going to be under attack. Elite Camel Rider's going to be coming out as well. You can see them working it down, just focusing down the Trebs. 
The reason you go for the Trebs here is you're just going to stall out the push. You don't care if you lose all of your units here. You're stalling out the push. You're buying yourself more time. You can drop down more outposts, more keeps. You know, more buildings just to delay your enemy. That's exactly what you want to do. Now we see Symptom really starting to go through it, beginning to move through the enemy's base. He's cut a hole through the wall. Oh my lord, that is a lot of bombards beginning to come through. We hear the emplacements firing off the cannons. Looking to dish out damage. You can see how much damage they do. So much damage to those bombards. He continues moving forward. He's actually pretty damn close, I'm going to be honest. But remember, there, there are two big buildings in front of that prayer hall of Ukba. And if they get taken out, then it's just going to be that left to two. Carverin getting sniped out there. Doing a good job. I, I like this little hill spot he's got. Honestly, if he can bring a bombard up here, take out this outpost, take out the keep, he's going to be super duper good. Keep play continuing to move forward now. Second keep going to get thrown down from Matiz. With this keep getting dropped, it's going to send Matiz's uh, economy under that threshold to actually drop down another wonder. But Stone's still at a, a very reasonable price. 622 gold. Now pushing up a lot of hand cannoneers. Keep in mind, these guys have got that network of Citadel's bonus. Going to be applying plenty of increased attack speed. An extra 50% attack speed on those hand cannoneers. This is what makes the, the English late game so damn difficult to deal with. These hand cannoneers have got so much DPS. The big thing about hand... The reason why it's such a great bonus for the English to have is that hand cannoneers, they overkill things. What does that mean? That means that they're doing like... Everyone's attacking a single unit and they're doing a thousand damage to it, but it's only got 200 health. So they're overkilling it. So what that extra attack speed does is it allows you to overkill more things more often. So you really get a lot of bonus. So if you got 100% uh, extra damage, that wouldn't work well with the hand cannoneers. It would work, work well with the longbows. But what works well with these hand cannoneers is that extra attack speed. Keep coming up now. More trebs on the backside. And at the same time, towards the south, we've got attacks happening on all angles. You can see those culverin. You hear the emplacements just firing off right now. It is looking like it's fireworks season. Happy New Year to all of you guys. We'll take a look right now at how much longer we've got on that wonder. Seven minutes to go. So still quite some time. No gongs happening just yet. Those trebuchets continuing to move forward, looking to take out all of these buildings. And you can see he's ignoring the outposts that don't have emplacements. These two don't have emplacements, so he ignores them. You can tell which ones have got emplacements by their little windows. So if they've got those little window coverings on them, they've got the emplacements. So you want to take out all these bad boys here. These new ones on the front, you don't care so much about these ones. <laughs> Did someone type in the chat, truce? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Avery asking for a truce. I mean, if he really wanted to survive here, he could delete the wonder. But the problem is, I mean, his enemies are looking to kill him right now. And he's in such a good spot that it makes sense. He's the top score holder as well. 37k. And you compare that to someone like Matiz, who's despite having 200k plus resources, uh, is, is still sitting down on 24k. I don't know where he's getting that extra score from. I think it's got to be those outposts, right? Like, it's got to be in those outposts. So much extra score. But now, a little bit of an unfortunate position here. Culverin coming out. Going to be able to pick apart those trebuchets. More trebuchets coming in on the backside as well. You can see he's just rolling out Wingard armies nonstop. Plenty of lances or, or knights coming out as well. Just reinforcing this. And a beautiful late game composition. We talked about this before. Knights together with hand cannoneers. It is a potent combination here. And you can really see it coming in full force now. More knights. And now the prayer hall of Ukba is slowly in the sights of Matiz. Down towards the south, we see more bombards coming through. Reinforcements. Further siege workshop is going to be placed down. This is exactly what you need here on the front. We'll check in with the timer and see how it's doing. Six minutes to go until Averly is victorious. He's doing a decent job at holding on, but there, there are a lot of outposts in this position. The Trebs are just doing work over on the north front. We'll check in and see with Averly how much resources or how many resources he's got in the bank. It's not looking pretty, boys. It's not looking pretty. He's sitting on 60 population right now. Oh, my Lord. Those resources have run out very quickly. Remember, this is a guy who was sitting on... I'm pretty confident. He was sitting on 100,000 gold. He's down to 14 gold at the moment. He has got nothing. He has spent every single cent. Averly has tried his best to pull off that one to victory, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the case today. Second town center going to be going down. He's got the main town center as well as the House of Wisdom. And look at the emplacements firing off right now. It is like, oh my lord. Matiz saying can't push fast enough. You can see Matiz is baiting him into it. Matiz can definitely push fast enough. He's baiting him into it. He's telling him like, I want you to waste as many resources as you can. Oh my lord. Look at the fireworks going off right now. 
lot of, lot of bombards coming out right now. Keep in mind, 10 range up against 10 range. So these bombards are going to be acting... Well, the the uh, cannon emplacements are acting as, as culverin almost. Ideally, you'd love to see villagers pulled out towards the front to repair up these uh, bombards. But I do believe they would die to the cannon emplacements. So it's like you're, you're a really, really quite stuffed here. You probably just got to pull back the low health ones. But now Mapsis continues pushing through. Matty's going to be dropping a wonder of his own. Look, he's up to 6,000 stone. He's rebought. He's re-triggered. I think as soon as he... As soon as that... I, I think he knows that he's in a good spot here. He knows how much time he's left. We'll take a look at it. Four minutes and 30 seconds. He's waiting until the end. Ideally, he wants to turn... Make sure that the attention is is drawn towards... Uh, to, towards Averly here. But if that, if that wonder goes up, I wouldn't be surprised if Simtom just surrenders immediately. I mean, Simtom's not the kind of guy to surrender, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, but, I, I mean, Mathis is in such a good spot. Continuing to unpack upon these outposts. And you can see, he, he could focus down this prayer hall of Ukba if he wanted. If he really wanted to. But instead, just taking out all of these on the backside. Absolutely nothing left right now for Averly. Averly's sitting on 50 population. He's got 11 villagers in queue. I can't help but feel. Peace if I delete. Wanda says, Averly. Oh, I think it might be a little bit too late. Okay, leave my corpse to witness this. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my lord. At this point, you could probably even come down for these landmarks. Remember, it's an extra three points if you can take those bad boys out. That is looking very solid. And now the Bombard's coming in from the south. More and more Bombard's just being taken out non-stop. The resources on this map are being drained. He's got the gold from the trade, but the wood, that's going to be the issue. Now the Trebs look very happy. You can see he's intentionally leaving this. Just focusing down on all the buildings here. The Prayer Hall of Ukba is very easily killed. But he knows, he, he wants Symptom to waste as many resources as possible. Three minutes until one to defeat. Symptom, help me, please, brother. Help me. I need your assistance, Symptom. Please, Symptom, help me. I'm dying, Symptom. I can't do it. Symptom is trading. I mean, to be fair, Matt is, is, is trading as well. Village is actually coming out to repair that wonder. Treb's still looking not to take it down. I think there might be one or two Trebs that are attacking it. Maybe one Trebuchet. Matches with plenty of resources in the bank. He knows that he's absolutely fine here. He knows there's nothing left from from uh, from Averly. And so he just bides his time. He just plays the game right now. It is all role play from this point on. Matt is, he's going for kill. Save me, I think he said. <laughs> oh, Matt is. Oh my lord, the fireworks. Ladies and gentlemen, the fireworks right there. Happy New Year. Boom, boom, boom. That's Venga Boy stuff right there. That was a, that was a lot of outposts. Oh! <laughs> I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize it went down there. I, I wasn't even paying attention. I was too busy watching the fireworks. Well, it was no real surprise to any of us. The wonder goes down, but with that, the landmarks are going to become the next target there. Apologies for missing that. I can't believe I missed it. Did he delete that wonder? He may have deleted the wonder. I think he knew it was going to go down. So now the battle really begins between Symptom and Matiz. And, and Matiz, obviously, he's in a great position, but Symptom probably thinks he's in a good spot. He's got a little bit over 30,000 resources. And now we can see the rebuild coming in on the front side for Averly. Averly's town center yet to be under attack. Averly is saying in the chat that he's down from 100k gold. Apparently for Crackity, it says that the wonder is still alive. Well, my friend, the wonder is dead. Now, remember that you do not lose the game if you lose your wonder. It doesn't count as a landmark. It just counts as like this individual building. So you will lose the game if you lose both of your landmarks here as the Abbasid Dynasty. And we can see that we've still got quite a big push that's coming in from the south here from Simtom. Now the question is, I mean, if we do a bit of an assessment right now, how likely is it that Simtom gets knocked out? 
These two landmarks are looking pretty safe. And there's a lot of distance between these two. Towards the north, I, ge I genuinely think Averly could have taken out Matthias earlier and didn't. And as a result, he gets punished for it. Averly's still getting cleaned up towards the north. Treb's actually trebbing down the House of Wisdom. It's happening. A couple of Culbs coming out looking to try and take down the trebuchets. He's got nine, eight trebuchets now. One of them does go down. A lot of Culbs moving out. Villager's going to be repairing up that House of Wisdom. He's going to move the trebuchets back. Springwood's going to be coming out, firing down upon them. Enemy attacking. I am Averly's landmark. Indeed they are. You can see him looking to secure the House of Wisdom first. So at this point, Matiz could easily build a wonder, yet is not doing so. He's just staying in the game, just keeping it in the game at this point. Looks like the Culverin going to be under a little bit of attack there. Elite Knights, slowly but steadily, running in, just forcing it back. Uh, I'm just receiving word now from someone in chat saying that he didn't actually delete the Wonder. It was a full volley of the trebuchets that killed it in a single blow, apparently. I I'm just impressed that Matt is. Like, honestly, the thing that impresses me most about Matt is, is that he keeps his score this low and yet has 200k score or 200k resources in the bank. Like, it just goes to show you that when it comes to games like this, that you can't really rely on score as an indicator of wealth. Like, typically players would. They'd be like, okay, the guy with the highest score, that's the biggest threat. But the reality is, I mean, I, I'm, I guess the other thing that impresses me is the fact that he's got 62k gold and he's playing as the English. Like, where do you even get that gold from? Bombard's on the bot side. Moving through. Trebuchet is actually focusing down the town center now. Town center going to come down. Now we could have ourselves a little bit of a battle here. Now I think it would be very poetic if both players actually killed the uh, the House of Wisdom at the same time. But you can see it's going to be a little bit of a struggle here. Symptom actually focusing down villages? Oh no, or is he focusing? I think he's focusing the Culverin down. Culverin going to be able to survive once again, but drawing back those bombards towards these outposts. And Averly's still sitting on 26,000 score. Symptom up on 31,000. Running in more horsemen underneath those emplacements. Very quickly do they go down. You can just see how powerful those cannon emplacements are. More bombards now going to be coming in from the south side. We can see the trickle, the slow trickle of bombards. I say slow, but I tell you what, that's pretty damn quick. Trebuchet is now beginning to focus down. It's going to be the House of Wisdom. Both players actually looking to take it down. We're going to have to watch the rocks. The best way to tell is going to be that shadow that comes in. You should be able to see it over here. There it is. That's going to tell you when those... The damage is going to trigger when you see those shadows. I'm going to slow it down. When we, when we get right towards the end, I'm going to slow it down. And then we'll speed it back up. I want to see if we can spot who gets the, the last hit. I mean, to be honest, both of these guys are probably going to get half a point each. You can definitely assume that they've killed it equally. House of Wisdom is now burning down. We're going to slow this bad boy down. Here we go. Everyone's coming in for it. Down to half speed. I'm going down. Oh, I can't go any slower. It goes down. I think it was the Bombards on the south side. I saw the, the shot come in. I'm pretty confident that was the Bombards on the south side. We're going to have to go to our Adjudicator. Uh, I'm pretty confident that was a Sniper Rooney right there. Uh, very good game goes over to Averly. He's going to be our third place finisher for this evening. And then there were two. And still, I love that Symptom is, or uh, that um, Matt is, despite having... Okay. All right. Now Matt is goes for a wonder. And he's like, you know what? I had this in the back pocket the whole time. It's like, Matt is, you've known for the last 10 minutes that Averly is dead. But he... Oh. I think the reason why he only did... Okay. It makes sense. If he builds this wonder, then Symptom just attacks him. Symptom doesn't know what kind of threat Matiz is. 
So Matiz doesn't put down the wonder until the very end and reveals his full house. It all makes sense. You know, he has been checking. He checked the flop. He checked pre-flop. He checks the, the, the turn. He checks the river. And then all of a sudden, Simtom goes all in. And Matthias calls it. He's got the Cathedral of St. Thomas. He's got 15 minutes to win. And we see... What is a curious decision <laughs> right now. Now, Simtom's got a couple of plays here. Number one is that he can think about sacred sites. We can see he's captured up the first sacred site. The second sacred site in the center, still yet to be taken. And the third sacred site, which is a little bit closer, is actually held by Matiz and arguably in Matiz's base. So it's going to be very difficult for him to go for a sacred site victory. So if he's smart, he might be able to move all the way up to the north. I reckon you could. I reckon you could. I reckon he could. We'll have to see how he plays it. He's moving up around the, the side. A lot of knights coming out for Matthias. He knows exactly what is happening. He knows what his enemy is up to. Outpost going to be able to spot this one out. He's got to be careful. Not a lot of units here. Down towards the south. We've got more of a fight coming. Matthias looking to hold position here. Bombard's going to get chased away. Those knights doing a decent job. Four Bombard's going to be going down. And with that, this push on this northern side is going to get shut down. We hear some trading going on. Matt is buying a little bit of stone in the backside. And now the question is, where does the fighting go? We'll take a look at Sim Tom's perspective. He's sitting on 125 villages still. So only going to be able to have 80 population of units. Bit of a push coming down towards the south. This could work. This could work. This could work. I like it. Symptom now coming in from the south of Matiz's base. I feel like he may have gone a little bit early over here. If he'd set those cavalry out first, done a bit of scouting, he could have 100% come in for a snipe. Over towards the east, though. It continues to build. Bombard's going to be coming over. Looking to come across that crest. More Bombards coming out as well from Simtom. Huge numbers, actually, from Simtom. Things are looking good for him. So the question is, how does Matiz go about defending this? If we take a look at Matiz right now, he's sitting on 124 military population. Honestly, at this point, Matiz, I would be comfortable with you deleting every economic unit you've got in the game. There's just no point for it. You just don't need it. You've got 90,000 food, 50,000 gold, just delete it. Get some knights out. You know, put on a bit of a spectacle, Matthias. You can do it, I believe. Matthias looking to run around, run rings around this base. Look at this. It is like a labyrinth of walls that he's going through. Matthias now looking to clean up this position. Bombard sneaking around the top. Going to be able to unfold upon these knights. There's actually a lot of bombards here. These guys have got their chemistry upgrade as well. As well, rather. Uh, so a lot of damage. And indeed, they do fall back. So that's just the power of the bombard right there. Now, that won't be happening after the next patch that comes in. We're going to be seeing big nerfs on Siege on the bombard in particular. Uh, so I suspect that uh, the cavalry will be very happy to take these guys on. But now the Springholds move to the top and look to peer over the, the, the corner as they begin making their way, cutting through all those forces down below them. There is no, no kisses that are going to be happening today. Symptoms base, absolutely insane right now. He's got production all over the map. Absolutely everywhere. Over on the east as well. And now the hand cannon is going to be coming in. Matt is looking to clean this up before any real damage gets done. Couple bombards up towards the north. They get spotted out. Villager is going to be re recalled back and going to be able to take that one out. Camelarch is going to be looking to offer up some assistance, but you can't help but feel that maybe it's not so much of a coherent push coming out here for a Simtom. Simtom really struggling here. It feels like Matiz is in an unbeatable, in an unbeatable position. That's hard to say. An unbeatable position. Trebuchets. Oh my lord, trebuchets. Still these trebuchets remain. 
He's got a beautiful natural choke down here towards the south. Still actually open from this position. Remember, this was once the base of... Whose base was this? Sort of. It was Sort of's base. There's been so many, so many walls, so many labyrinths built. It's hard to remember whose bases belong to who. Trebuchet is continuing to pop off. Over towards this eastern flank. Springled's in position. A lot of knights now. Matt is down to 177 population. Three Rebolda Quinn in queue. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. The Rebolda Quinn are coming out to play. And once again, able to force his opponent away from this position. We talked about it in the beginnings of the game. We mentioned the threat that there might be a little bit of an attack that comes through here. Indeed, it's been chopped through, and indeed, an attack has come through. No way to get down from here, though. It's great to use as a little vantage point, but other than that, can't really do much with it. We're all going to be coming up from Simtom. I don't know what he's aiming to achieve with this wall. Maybe just stopping the run-throughs potentially from coming through. He wants to try and focus the majority of the, of the enemy units in this one direction over here. Well, he's going to be able to do that right now. But unfortunately, he's leaving out a couple of these bombards a little bit too easily. Uh, and that's going to... Fortunately, they both managed to survive there. Camel Archer is going to be able to clean that up. Trebuchet's on the backside. A lot of Springwoods in here. Hand Cannon is going to be able to clean this up as well. Might be even thinking about dropping down some defensive walls across here of his own. Bombard's firing off. Looking for a little bit of a push through. Matiz may have found his feet. Another keep going to be coming up for Matt. Or rather, Simpton may have found his feet. Another keep going to be coming up for Simpton. Keep in mind, that wonder up towards the north. It is protected by many a keep, many a outpost. There's a lot to get through. We'll take a look at the timer and see how long he's got. He's got seven minutes to go. That is quite the ask. Seven minutes in the Rebolda corner out, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, what a beautiful show right there. You wanted fireworks. Well, here you go. Boom, baby, boom. Rebolda Quinn coming out and just looking to dish out damage. Look at the damage they put out. Do it. Get him, Rebolda Quinn. Get him. Unfortunately, the Rebolda Quinn, Rebolda Quinn remains a little bit of a meme. Matt is still holding on. Hasn't really pushed forward with his units, but is slowly and steadily losing this. There is the chance that Matiz might not be able to hold this. He's still sitting on 49 population or economic unit population. Units keep funneling it. Hand cannon is going to be what sealed the deal here, it looks like. Here, it looks like. Looking to try and take out all these units. And indeed, he does a good job. He cleans it up and he pushes it back. We'll tune in with Symptom. And, oh, it's not looking pretty for Symptom. It is not looking pretty for Symptom right now. A little bit of an attack coming through over on this angle. You can see the council hall's down, but that's been down for quite a while. Main town, town center's down as well. He hasn't even repaired this up. If he knew, he could potentially look to snipe King's Palace and then look to snipe out the Wingard Palace. That's a that is 100% a possibility. But now the Camel Archer's going to be coming through, and you can see Simtom. He is really struggling at this point. Not a lot of resources in the bank. We'll take a look at Matiz, but I think he might be your winner here. I don't think there's any possible way that Simtom can push through this. He just doesn't have... He doesn't have the economy. Look at the resources in the bank right now. And this, this is the thing, right? You just don't know. When someone's score indicates that they're so much further ahead than everybody else. But the reality is, is that you've got this sleeper agent. And good game gets called! Matiz is your victor this evening. Simtom signs out and says good night, sweet prince. Fellas, what an absolute mammoth game right there. A marathon game and good game to Matt is. He's going to be our victor here for game number two. And good game's getting called. Oh, it's over, says Averly. Indeed it is, my friend. Indeed it is. Let's take a look at some of the stats right there. And get an idea. B coming in with the negative 16 score. Uh, I don't know if that's, a, if that's a good score or not, but um, I guess it's better than plus minus one wood. We can say that much. 2,300 units killed. 1695 for Symptom. 1500 for Averly. These guys ha had a huge amount of units killed right there. We'll take a look at society. I don't know if this is going to indicate. I want to see buildings built. Is there a way to see buildings? I mean, you can see Symptom killed 289 buildings. For anybody who's not good at math, that's a lot. That is a lot of buildings. We'll take a look at the timelines, get a bit of an idea. Village account looking silly. You know what? Total resources count. Yeah, that's your real story right there. And you can see Averly almost got up to the same level that Matiz did. Obviously, as soon as he dropped that wonder, down she went. 
But even with Matias dropping a wonder at the end, uh, it, it was a very slow fall for him. Uh, we'll take a look and see the, the relics. Uh, how do I see that one? I'm, I'll see if I can find that. Is it technology? Maybe society? Oh, relics. Oh my god, Crackety had 11 relics. Is that even legal? What? That is a huge amount of relics. Oh my lord. Well, fellas, if you're watching this one on YouTube, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. It has been an absolute battle. A mammoth battle. I think it's our longest one yet. So hopefully you guys liked it. Let me know what you think about the chat as well. And most importantly, go check out Crackity here. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can watch Crackity live. He's going to be over on Twitch. I don't know if he'll be live right now, but go drop him a follow. Go say good day. He's a great China player. Uh, unfortunately, didn't pull it out today. Out the Muslim, nor did Crackity pull it out today. But uh, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.